Okay, uh, welcome back to uh, some more lessons here on partial fraction decomposition. Just like we talked about yesterday, we are going to um, move on to case three and case four. This is all going to be posted in one blog post, and we'll work on this on Wednesday in class. So if you have any questions, you can ask about them then. Um, we've already covered case one, which is distinct linear factors case two, which is repeated linear factors, and now we're on to case three, which is non-repeated quadratic factors. Same steps, the same seven steps we talked about in class on Monday. Um, now it's just a matter of how we set it up that's going to be a little bit different. And so we're going to start off here with example one. Example one says three over x minus one times x squared plus two. First thing that we're going to look at is can we factor this any further? And no, we can't. So it's completely factored already, so we're good to go. The next step is going to be to set it up. And so we're going to break it up into two individual fractions. We put our denominators of x minus 1 and x squared plus 2. Now, because x minus 1 <coughs> is a linear factor, it's not x squared, it's just x minus 1, we're just going to put an a above it. But the second factor is x squared plus 2, which is a quadratic. Now, because it's a quadratic on the bottom, we want to put a linear on top. And so linear is like mx plus b, ax plus b. In this case, we've already used a, so we're going to do bx plus c. That's it. That's the new step. Now it's a matter of just going through and multiplying by the common denominators, just multiplying, simplifying, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll finish the problem up. I'm going to multiply here by x minus 1, x squared plus 2. Multiply here by x minus 1, x squared plus 2. Multiply here by x minus 1, x squared plus 2. All right. The left side, everything cancels out. Good. On the right side, the x minus 1's cancel. On the left, or, and then the next part, the x squared plus 2's cancel. Leaving me with 3 on the left, a x squared plus 2 plus bx plus c times x minus 1. So there's our new setup. Now it's just a matter of going through and distributing or foiling or whatever it is we got to do. So we have ax squared plus 2a plus bx times x is bx squared, c times x is cx, bx times uh, negative 1 is negative bx, and then c times negative 1 is negative c. So let's group our terms together. We have two x squared terms and ax squared and bx squared. So I'm going to write those out. ax squared plus bx squared. We have two x squared or x terms and that's negative bx plus cx. And then we have two constant terms, 2a and negative c. So we'll say plus 2a minus c. So the next step would be to get the x squared out. So we're going to say a plus b times x squared. We're going to get the negative b or the x out here. So we're going to say uh, plus negative b plus c x. And then we have our constant term of 2a minus c. Now over here on the left, we really only have this 3, which is our constant term. We don't have an x term, so it's going to be plus 0x. And we don't have an x squared term, so it's going to be 0x squared. So when I set the coefficients equal to one another, my first one is going to be a plus b equals 0. Then I'm going to have negative b plus c equals 0. And then my last one will be 2a minus c equals 3. All right. If you want, you could put this into a matrix and, and solve it that way. But uh, I'll just go ahead and, and take a look at this, because if I combine these two, I get 2a minus b equals 3. 
If I combine the top one to that, I get 3a equals 3, so a equals 1. If a equals 1, I can plug it back in here and say 1 plus b equals 0. b must be negative 1. And if a equals, or if negative 1, uh, let's see, negative, negative 1 plus c equals 0, it means 1 plus c equals 0, c must also equal negative 1. And so now there's my three variables, all right, my a, b, and c. So the next step is, and the final step, is just to plug them back in. And so we're going to say 1 over x minus 1 plus negative 1x minus 1 over x squared plus 2. Last thing, just to make it more proper, is to take this negative plus minus. If I factor out a negative, I'm going to factor out a negative from here and here. So it's actually going to become 1 over x minus 1 minus x plus 1 over x squared plus 2. And that's my final answer. Okay? It's plus 1 because I took a negative out of the first term and the second term, so I almost kind of wrote it like this. And then took that negative and threw it down in front. And so that's uh, non-repeated quadratic factors. Check out the other ones uh, to see how those work.